Oh God, amen. To be all glory now and forever unto in the ages, amen. We heard the Christmas story so many times, and we celebrated so many times this uh, great feast. And this feast uh, stands out in many ways. And there are many aspects of the things that we do, we got so used to doing. I want to just to dig deep, deep, dig a little bit deeper when it comes to these things that we do, that we got so used to doing. So I ask myself, what is Christmas all about? What takes, what occupies the attention of people when it comes to Christmas? So the first thing I think the people, when they hear the word Christmas, they think of, oh, Christmas tree. Think of ornaments. So I want to talk a little bit about ornaments. See, we see here a very beautiful Christmas tree here. I'm sure everyone had um, something like this at home. Thank God we have one like this in church downstairs. But uh, imagine if this tree looked like that. Would this be Christmas? Would this be Christmas? No, it's not. If you bring this tree and put it together with no Nothing on, you say, no, no, this is not a Christmas tree. That's a tree, it's not a Christmas tree. The same thing, we need to imagine kid, our, our lives if we have no ornaments in us. We have no nothing, ornament is something beautiful. It's, it's like a, I think of the ornament more as like a fruit. A fruit, kid, like, you know, imagine, kid, look at this tree, kid, and you see these ornaments. Are like, are like fruits kind of hanging on a tree. So our life should have kind of the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. Where is the fruit of the Spirit? If Christmas came and passed away without you acquiring and growing your fruits of the Spirit, then it's like, the, it's like that bare Christmas tree with nothing on. Do you have fruit of the Spirit or not? Do you have the fruit of the Spirit or not? St. Paul talks about them, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Hmm. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these such is no law. You can't go, there's no law. It means like you can never go wrong when you have the fruit of the Spirit. Make sure, make sure we can set aside by all the negative things. If you read the whole chapter... Um, of Galatians 5, he's saying there are bad fruits. There are bad fruits. I didn't put them here, but you can find them in the Bible. We want to set us, uh, this Christmas time is to set out, or set away these bad fruits and acquire and renew and grow these great things, these great qualities. All of these things uh, we should uh, reap at this time in Christmas. We don't want to be ornaments on the, have ornaments on the tree and inside there's nothing on. And this is what St. Peter said. He, he's, talking to, he's talking to wives or women at that time. But I want to take this, it does not apply to women only here, but it should apply to us also, everyone. Do not lure adornment like ornament. Adornment is like ornaments. Be merely outward. Do not just be outward. Arranging the hair, wearing gold, putting a fine apparel. Rather, what is bad? The real ornaments that we should all have in our life at this time. The hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty, incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. This is what's really important for you to have this beauty because the, the beauty, the outward the beauty, and the outward appearance changes and decays over time, but the inward one does not. The, the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of the gentle and quiet spirit, this is very precious in the eyes of God. This is very precious in the eyes of God. I hope this is a one thing. I want to find what are my internal ornaments at this time. Back to the question, what is Christmas all about? Hmm, what's the next thing that's very important? Hmm, 
Gifts, yes, right? Huh? Gifts, right? Everyone's looking for gifts, right? Everyone, I hope they got what they wanted for Christmas, right? So we get gifts, we give gifts, and it's very nice. We all like we, we saw the how the wise men came and presented gifts to our Lord. Imagine, kiddo, if you open your gift and this is what you found. Hmm, how would you feel? How would you feel about that? If this is the gift? You'd be upset. You'd be upset. You are a gift to God. You, you are. You, 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 you give yourself a gift to God. Imagine if God could have looks inside you and finds this. How would you feel? How would you feel, God? You would not be too happy, right? Okay. So we want to make sure that we are not like this. We are not like this. We want to give something. We want to give something. I want to show God to, to, to open Keda, the book of my life and find out that I've been giving and giving and giving. We need to give something. You see, the wise men gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. A little boy gave five loaves and two fish. Joseph of Arimathea gave a tomb. The, um, the lady gave a very costly um, uh, spike nard, ointment, perfume. The widow put two, gave two mites. Many people give simple things, but they meant a lot to God. What are you giving to Him? Many times, actually, what we do in Christmas time is we give people gifts and they, 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 they give us back gifts. What I call this is an even exchange. Give something, you get something. Give something. What good is that? What good is that? I mean, think of it this way. You know, you spend money to get, buy the gifts, and you get it back. So, what's the net gain? What's the net gain? It's zero. It is zero. It is absolutely zero. But we want to give when we have no expect of return. You tell me, Abuna, this is negative. I'm giving, I'm buying, and then I'm giving. I'm not getting back in the return. Yes. It is negative on earth, but not in heaven. Because God will not forget the reward of a cold cup of water that you can give. Just a cold cup of water, God does never eh, forgive it. So are you giving or not? Or are you just getting? We ought to learn to give. Little, little, you know, no matter how little you are, you ought to learn how to give. Ask me what we can give. He gave us so much. If you want to give, you have to realize what God gave you. He ascended, he told he came on earth, was incarnate, and lived and died, and after died, he descended into heads, and then he ascended. He ascended on high and led the, led the captivity captives. And Paul says in Ephesians, led the captivity those who are in, in, in Hades. He took them and gave gifts to men. He is the giver. We give thanks to the beneficent. Beneficent means he, he is the one who, he, who gives us what you have given him. That's what, God, that's what Jesus said. He said, if you love those who love you, what credit that you? You got no credit. If you're nice to those who are nice to you, if you give gifts to those who can give back to you, nothing, zero. Even sinners, he's saying, hey, you, you'll be no better than sinners who love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? You have no credit, absolutely. Well, even sinners do the same. We're on the same level, the same level as sinners, because they, they're good to each other. We have to go beyond that. We have to learn how to give. Some people don't have anything. Some people can't put food, their food on the table. We have to learn how. This is the whole point of the fast. It's not just to change me food. It's for me to set aside, instead of buying all this expensive food, I'll eat very simple food. And with the money that you save, you do something good for the brethren of the Lord, to build the house of the Lord, to, to, to help somebody in need. And not just about money. Sometimes Abuna talks about my, uh, giving because of money. No, it's not about money. It's giving of yourself. St. Paul says we came to share. We did not just share the gospel, but we shared ourselves. Share of your time. 
Many times we like to help. Oh, we don't have convenient time. But take it. Make make some time. Make some time. Make some time to be with your to help your family, to help a sibling, to help a loved, to help someone who needs help. Make a time. You know, when 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 you're busy. Not just giving time, giving of your. This by when it comes the hardest of my ego, of my ego. Can you learn how to give of your ego? What does it mean to give of your ego? Hmm. What does it mean? What's ego? Arfin ego? What's ego? That little me, mine, myself. Little kid, eh? Something inside me that gets so upset if someone kind of steps on my toes or someone touches me or someone does anything. When somebody says something to me, that's my ego. Give a little bit. It's time to let go. It's time to forgive. Because if we cannot forgive, what will happen? We will never be forgiven. We can forget about being forgiven. We will forget about being forgiven. We have to forgive. We have to reconcile. That's why we cannot proceed in the liturgy unless we have the prayer of reconciliation and we forgive and we are at peace with one another. This is a central theme of Christmas. This is a central theme of our church. And trust me, one of the most important is love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't say love your neighbor, your good neighbor. He didn't say love your good neighbor. He said love your neighbor, not your good neighbor, your neighbor, which could be either or. I don't know what about them. It's their problem. But it's my problem if I don't forgive, if I fail to forgive. And again, it would be like the sinners who, who love each other, they take care of each other, and they're mean to each other. So we don't want to be like that. We want to be a few notches higher. So what is Christmas all about? About ornaments, huh? And about gifts, and about what else? Huh? Food. It's about food, I'm sure, everyone. Had a very nice meal. I've been I have a very nice few meals, yani, so over the last uh, past uh, uh, 24 hours or so, or 36 hours. Imagine, kidda, if all what you have for Christmas is this, how would you feel? Hmm. I'm very upset. Exactly, kidda, if you if your soul, if you leave your soul hungry, kidda, we feed our bodies. We take care of our bodies really well. What about your soul? Did you feed something to your soul? Hmm? Do you feed something to your soul? Is your soul full or is it starving for the word of God? Is it starving for the sacraments? That's why we come to the, around the altar becomes a central theme. That's why I've been saying the last few weeks, if I come to Christmas and I just kind of come to say kind of Merry Christmas and go home, and I didn't get anything. Unless I have partake of the sacraments, I partake of the Eucharist, then my Christmas meaning becomes very hollow. So God is calling us to fill our souls. Do not just feed your body at this time, but fill your soul. And that's why Christ was so clear, could not be any clearer about um, the Eucharist in John chapter 6. He said, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. No life means, hey, you're not alive. You're not hey, alive. Even though you could be breathing and walking, and, eating, and you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. I will raise him up on the last day. My flesh is food indeed. I am my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and abides in him. You want Christ to be born in your life. This is how. By this is how, by partaking, being, being prepared, which, which involves, of course, to take communion. It's not just to walk up to the altar and say, I want to take communion. No, it involves much more. It involves preparation. involves repentance. involves confession. It involves uh, me, me participating in the liturgy, not just showing up through communion. It's not an easy pass. It involves reconciliation again with one another, because I can't. He says, if, if, I, if I remember I have something against my brother and come to offer sacrifice, say, God, hold on, hold on, stop, 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 stop. You have to go and reconcile first and come so you can partake of, partake of, a, of the sacrifice. 
So take communion is not just a walking up to a woman and I want to take communion. It involves much more than that. No wonder why where we bake the Orban, the holy bread is called what? Huh? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. We call it Bethlehem. By the way, the word lahm, some people say it says lahm means lahm. No, it means bread. Actually, in, in Aramaic, it means bread. So it is the house of bread. It's the house of bread. So being born in Bethlehem reminds me of the Orban, reminds me of the Hamad, reminds me of the Eucharist. So you can, you can make the link now. So what's Christmas all about? We talked about a ornaments, hmm? or gifts, hmm? food. And what uh, the last thing I want to talk about is about fellowship. It's about fellowship. All, you know, it's very hard when somebody is, is home Christmas by themselves or Easter or, or whatever, any feast, any of the big, big feasts by themselves. We all love to be one another. We all love to be one another. Have a good time together. Imagine kind of, if somebody is home by themselves, kind of, it must be a very, very difficult, a very difficult time, very difficult time for them. We want to have fellowship. We want to have fellowship with the newborn of the manger. We see kind of, like uh, the icon we have here, like this icon here. We see um, St. Mary with Joseph and the baby Jesus, and then we have the wise men offering their um, treasures. And the background, you see the shepherds coming. Oh, by the way, these are two separate incidents. We draw them together because they're tied around the same theme, the, the coming to honor the, the, new, the, the, the Christ, the born king. But the, the, the shepherds came on the, on the night he was born, because this is what the angel told him, tonight, today, this day. And the, the wise men came about a year and a half later. But they weren't alone. Who was uh, who also is in the picture? Hmm. Hmm. Who's in the picture? Man, the Lord Jesus. We talked about the Holy Family, the, the wise men and the shepherd. Who, who else is in the picture? Hmm. The angels. Do you have heavenly fellowship or not? Because we gather around each other. We see uh, sometimes out of custom. Sometimes I have no option but to gather around each other. But do you have fellowship? Not just with one another, but with the angels or not, with the saints or not. Because guess what? Our life on earth, no matter what it is, it is short. We are all, or we should be all, heaven-bound. So I cannot be heaven-bound unless I have fellowship with heaven from now, from this moment. So Christmas reminds me to have a heavenly fellowship, to have a heavenly fellowship. You see? Suddenly there was an angel with a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. So this joy and fellowship among each other comes from, a, from heaven, from up above. And this is what I should be looking first and foremost. We are surrounded, St. Paul says in Hebrew, by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside. So when I feel like I'm in this heavenly atmosphere, then... I say, how can I keep living the same way and talk, saying the same things and seeing the same things and doing the same things, abusing the same stuff and all of this, all of this stuff? How can I be? If I'm heaven bound, I need to prepare myself from this moment. I have to get my act together right now. So let us lay aside and put aside every weight. Every weight, all the sin, I think all the sin is like a, you are an athlete running with a bag of rocks. Imagine kind of running with a bag of rocks. You'll be get so tired so fast, you'll go nowhere fast. And this is what we do when we continue to choose to live in sin. We have to put aside the sin which ensnares us, ensnare like a trap, traps us and lets us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We need to kind of learn from St. Mary. In the Gospel of St. Luke, talks about how she saw these things, but did not really let these things go away. Kind of. She kept these things in her heart. St. Mary kept these things in her heart. She kept pondering upon them. 
I hope, you know, in a few days you don't forget the message of Christmas. You know, I'm, it's, it's amazing how the, the you know, the, the, the stores, you know, the, as soon as Christmas is over, now it's time to put the Valentine. In, and it's like every, everything is being raised, rushed out. I want to get the glow of Christmas to stay in your life. The glow of Christmas to stay in your life. Make sure you have the right ornaments inside. I'm not gonna, like, a, like that empty tree. Make sure that when God sees and looks inside, he doesn't find a hollow gift, find something valuable inside you. Make sure that you don't just keep on you know, eating you know, the earthly food without nourishing your soul. Make sure that you don't just have, does not, Christmas does not become a social thing, a social activity. Make sure it has a, a strong spiritual dimension for the glory of God. To God be all glory now and forever unto the end of all ages. Amen. Oh, say. Yeah.